This screencast is about importing data into PowerBase and or Civi CRM. I am Josue Guillen with the Progressive Technology Project and if you click on contacts and choose import contacts uh, you can start the import process into the database. Uh, first you would identify the spreadsheet uh, that you are using. Uh, usually the first column does contain headers and so we check that. Uh, we then uh, tell the database what type of data we are importing people. Uh, if I had uh, one of these subtypes I could choose that but we just have regular folks here. For duplicate contacts the first go-round is almost always saying to skip if you find duplicates, the database will give you a nice spreadsheet of all the duplicates that it thinks it found for you to be able to verify. It. Uh, we now have an option to choose which rule we're going to use for identifying those duplicates. And I've set one up here that uses the phone and or street address. And then uh, comma separated is usually how a CSV file is uh, structured and then dates. Uh, if you have more than one column that are dates, all the dates have to have the same format. I do not have any dates and so it does not matter but it is something to keep in mind. And the field mapping once you do an import uh, you map all the fields, you have an option to save it in case you have to do it again and we will talk about that on the next screen. I click continue and we get the first opportunity to see the data that we have and to connect it to the proper fields in the database. If you are importing data and there is no field yet in the database, uh, then you have to stop this process and go to Administer, Customize, and Custom Data and create a field that can store the data you're importing. Courtesy title, Mr. Mrs., etc. is stored under individual prefix. And so I am choosing that for any rows of data that have information in this field. First name and last name. Uh, address 1 is actually street address. And for me, all of these addresses are home addresses. Uh, you can make your address uh, whatever location is pertinent. If you have different types of addresses, if for some people these are home and some of these are work, you are going to need to separate those out you know, into either separate columns or separate spreadsheets so that you can import all the home addresses together and all the work addresses together. Here we have a second address field, additional address 1 would work for that, city, state, postal code, country, phone number again, phone number extension, uh, we are not going to be importing, and when you choose not to import you uh, then are just ignoring this field completely and then the cell phone we're going to change phone to mobile. Uh, the types of phones versus the location of the phones and then the fax we're going to choose phone and make it a fax number and then email address and again type of email address and then constituent type. We have a field called constituent type set up in PowerBase that is a multi-select field and so you have more than one option here uh, separated by a comma. 
and then I'm going to go ahead and save this field mapping and give it a name so that if something goes wrong, if this doesn't work, or if I need to do it again, I don't have to I don't have to go and click all of these fields to get all of this set up. I click continue and the database will give me the first set of problems and fabulous all 67 rows have invalid data of some sort or another and so I click download errors and I can open up import errors.csv in a spreadsheet program and see what the problems are. The database does a great job of letting us know what the issues are. So eh, the very first reason that is a problem is the country table. A USA is, we can look at the data, the country USA is not a valid country entry. I think just US is what we need. So let's make that quick fix and return to the database and try this again. And so you can see why it was useful to have saved the mapping of these fields. So I am going to use the same spreadsheet with the same options, except here a test fake import is what I called it. And now on this second screen, yeah, all of the fields should be matched up, individual prefix, and the mobile phones, and the fax phone, and the constituent type, and then we're going to continue. So now this third screen, which had the problem with country, now has three records that had an issue of some sort. And so let's open up that one and see what the problem is. These are great ones. Constituent type had an invalid field, and so did individual prefix. So we had professor as an individual prefix for a couple of folks, and what this means is that in the database, under the uh, individual prefixes, we did not have professor included. And so if you do want to uh, be able to import this, you need to add professor as an individual prefix. This is the case with all the drop-down options when you are importing. They have to be there already. Individual prefix, just to point it out again, was under administer and option lists, individual prefixes. The other one the constituent type is actually custom data and this one is saying you have politician and politician is not there. That one under administer, customize and custom data I will move to constituent info individuals which is where the field constituent type lives and I'm going to edit multiple choice options and this list does not have politician in it and so I am going to add politician and put it in the option value as well as the label and then save it. Now we fixed all three of the errors that we got and let's try to import these contacts again. I choose the spreadsheet. The first row contains column headers, the dedupe rule I want, the field mapping, and I click continue. I get to the second screen and everything is as it should be and I click continue. 
And now we get to the third screen, and there are no errors. Before importing, there's one last thing that you should always do. You have the ability to add imported records to a new group or to a new tag. You should do that. The main reason to do this and give it a name that associates it with this particular import is so that if it totally screwed up, you can pull up that group and you can delete all these people. That is the main reason, and I can't tell you how many times that has been really necessary. <laughs> Additionally, if you want, you can add them to other groups that also exist. And you can by a holding down the control on Windows or Command on a Mac, choose more than one existing group to add people to, but we are just going to go with a new group and click Import and click OK, and the database will start importing these records. When it finishes, and it depends on your internet connection and the records that you are importing, it depends on how long it'll take. Yeah. Step 4 says it imported 67 contacts. There are 67 contacts in this group now. It also points out when addresses were not able to be parsed correctly. So uh, you can uh, download that and look at those addresses if you like. But now we are done. Uh, click on done to finish this process. and erase the temp files, but we now have successfully imported some data.